the balancing redox reactions in basic solution in class, but I thought it'd be a better idea to work out some of the actual practice problems I've assigned you, so I'm going to work them out here. Y'all watch this. If you have any questions, just bring them to class with you tomorrow. So, <clears throat> the first one that we're going to do, we're going to take some aluminum. We're going to react it with some permanganate ion. And out of that, we are going to get some manganese. Oh, that's supposed to be a 2. My bad. MnO2 and some aluminum tetrahydroxide ion. So the first thing you have to do before you can even begin to balance a redox reaction is find the oxidation states for all these guys. Remember, y'all, I'm going to talk really fast through this. So pause it at each step of the way, work it out on your own, and then hit play if you need to hear me work something out. So the oxidation numbers for all of these guys, we've got a 0, plus 7, minus 2, plus 4, still minus 2, plus 3, still minus 2, and plus 1. So you can see right here that the element that uh, whose charge went down was the manganese. He went from plus 7 to plus 4, so he is reduced, which means that the element whose charge went up, the aluminum, who went from 0 to plus 3, is oxidized. Coming back over here to our reactant side, if manganese was reduced, then that means manganese over here is the oxidizing agent, and aluminum over here is the reducing agent. So what we do from here is we separate it into our half reactions. I always like to write the reduction reaction first just because that's how I am. So my manganese is my reduced element, so I'm going to put MnO4 minus gives way to MnO2. And then I'm going to put my oxidized reaction, which is the pure aluminum, gives way to the aluminum ALOH or minus ion. So starting back up here, first thing you do is you check to your main element in question, I guess. Um, we got one manganese on each side, so that one's balanced. Then you move on to your oxygens. We have four oxygens on this side. We have two on this side. That means we're too short over here, so we add two waters, because that's going to be our source of oxygens right now. So, oxygens are balanced, now we balance our hydrogens. We have none on this side, we have four on this side, so that means we're four short over here, so add four hydrogen ions. Now we need to balance charge. <clears throat> so to balance the charge, we look at each side of the reaction. This side we have plus four and minus one, gives us overall a plus three charge. On this side we got a zero and a zero, Zero. Which side is more positive? Well, this side is. And it's three charges more positive, so I need to add three electrons to that side to make it even out. So, that's done. Now I can move on to my aluminum hydroxide. Keep in mind we are doing this in a basic environment, so yes, we are eventually going to get rid of these quite acidic hydrogens, but right now we're just going to balance it. The first part of the basic balancing is to balance it as though you are in an acidic solution, and then we'll go back at the end and take care of it, take care of these acidic hydrogens. <clears throat> so start with this element right here. Our aluminums are balanced on each side. Move on to our oxygens. We have four oxygens over here. We have none over here. So that means we're going to need to add four waters to this side so that I get four oxygens to balance out these four over here. Now I look at my hydrogens. I have eight hydrogens on this side. I have four on this side. So since I have fewer on this side, then I'm going to add my four hydrogens ions to the product side. Now I need to balance out my charge. Over here I have a plus three charge. Over here I have a zero, so that means on this side I need to add three electrons to balance that out. Now from here, if it were an acidic environment, we would, you know, make sure that our electrons match up, which very conveniently they do, and then we would just combine these reactions and off you go. But this is not occurring in an acidic environment, it's occurring in a basic environment. So I gotta get rid of these hydrogens. Best way to get rid of hydrogens in this particular one, super easy. They simply cross out and cancel each other out. 
Love it when that happens. But let's just say, for argument's sake, that these guys, well, you know what? No, screw that. We're trying to save time on this test. So I'm going to cancel out the things that are alike. Three electrons, gone. Four hydrogens on each side, gone. Two waters. This four goes down to a two. Good. So since I got rid of all of my hydrogens, I actually don't have any hydrogens that I need to get rid of. I'll show you in the next example how you get rid of hydrogen. So put all these guys together. I have an MnO4, the permanganate ion, plus two waters, plus an aluminum, pure aluminum, gives me manganese dioxide. Old common term for this, this is actually manganese four oxide, plus the aluminum tetrahydroxide ion. And there you go. Check your charges. Make sure everything's balanced. Everything is. Yay. Moving on to the next one. <clears throat> oh, and keep in mind, too, it doesn't matter what order you write these in. Because, you know, this is like saying 2 plus 3 is the exact same as 3 plus 2. So if you put the aluminum first and the permanganate ion second, that's fine. It's all the same. All right, so the next one that we're going to do is some chromate. Chromium. We're going to take pure chromium. We're going to mix it with the chromate ion. And we're going to produce chromium hydroxide. And that is our only product that we're going to produce. So assigning oxidation charges to, or oxidation numbers to all of these, pure chromium is a zero. This particular chromium is a plus six charge, oxygen negative two. Chromium on this side is a plus three. Oxygen still a negative two. Hydrogen is still plus one. So you look at this and you go, okay, which element was oxidized? Well, the element whose charge went down is the element who was reduced. The element whose charge went up is the element who uh, was uh, oxidized. Sorry, got a little tongue tied there. So if you look, chromium went from a zero to a plus three. So that means chromium was oxidized. Well, look over here. Chromium went from a plus six down to a plus three. So that means it was also reduced. So this chromium hydroxide is going to be made up of chromiums that were oxidized and chromiums that were reduced in this solution here. So coming over here, this chromium is the guy whose charge went up. It was oxidized, so that makes him the reducing agent. This was the chromium whose charge went down, so that makes him the oxidizing agent. It is totally okay over here for an element to be both. Totally okay. So dividing up the uh, reactions, the reduction reaction first, CrO4 2 minus gives me CrOH3, and my oxidation reaction is the pure chromium turning into the CrOH3. <coughs> so starting up here with our first reaction. I got one chromium, one chromium, four oxygens, three oxygens. So I need to add another high water over here. Just one, because I only need one more oxygen. Now for my hydrogens, I have three hydrogens, and two hydrogens gives me five. I have none over on this side, so that means my five hydrogen ions need to go there to balance that out. Then for charges, I have plus 5 minus 2 gives me a plus 3 overall on this side. I've got a 0 and a 0, so that means I need 3 electrons over here. And that one's good. Coming down to this one. 1 chromium, 1 chromium. 3 oxygens, no oxygen. So let's add 3 waters over here. Hydrogens, 6 hydrogens here, 3 hydrogens here. That means I need three more on this side. Balancing out charges, no charge here, plus three charge over here, three electrons. Man, have I told y'all how much I love it when my electrons cancel each other out? Because then I don't have to do any of that least common multiple stuff. So cancel out what I can. Three electrons are gone. I got a water and three waters, so one water gone. That goes down to a two. Now with my hydrogens, I got three and five. So my three are gone, my five goes down to two. And these guys will just end up combining in the end. So I have extra hydrogens left over. 
can't have hydrogens if we're in a basic environment. So to get rid of the hydrogens, all I have to do is add the same number of hydroxides to each side. So two OHs to that side, two OHs to that side, and now these guys will actually bond up and make two waters. <clears throat> That'll combine with these two waters once I put everything together. And now I'm left with hydroxide ions, which is a great indicator of a basic reaction. So everything is all hunky-dory and happy. So combine this side. Two waters and two waters gives me four waters. I got my chromate ion. And I have my pure chromium. Everything else is gone. Then here I got one chromium hydroxide. I got another chromium hydroxide, so that means two CrOH3s plus my two hydroxides, and that's all that I have. And that is the balance reaction for this particular equation. Now I'm pretty sure looking at the time that I'm not going to have time to do um, another example problem. So uh, we'll work out that third one. And, you know what, I'm just going to make another video. So I'll make a second video working out that third example problem. And that, ladies and gents, is all I have for now.